Good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. It is Wednesday, and today you are stuck with only me. I'm Dr. Jess Trimble. Kelly is out today. So we're just going to jump right in. Um, we've sort of switched gears from talking about telehealth primarily uh, to more what sort of technologies we expect to see coming in the next few years. And a lot of these are just tied in very tightly with telehealth, telemedicine, teleeducation, teleadvice, the whole spectrum. Uh, and we briefly talked about wearables and smart devices before and how these can tie into a clinic's telehealth program. But I wanted to go a little bit more in depth today about the technology itself and why this uh, exact technology is going to be so critical, um, not just for veterinarians, but also for our consumers, for the clients, and how it's going to help us work together with our clients better, more efficiently, better data, uh, stronger relationships, better trust. Because these wearables and smart devices are going to provide our clients a, a level of transparency into their pet's health that they've never had before. Uh, you know, if you think up until this point, if a dog's heart rate was too high, or if it wasn't uh, getting around quite as well as it should have, or you know, if that cat's urinating in the box too much, you're bringing your pet to me, but you have to trust me. You have to believe that I'm telling you that your dog uh, has an elevated heart rate or that your cat maybe has a bladder issue. And that trust can be really difficult for people, uh, understandably so. So these devices are going to, rather than you know, having the client rely on the veterinarian for their pet's data, will allow the client to get data from these objects and then transfer that to the veterinarian. And I think it's going to set us up for a more successful partnership like we've never seen before because that layer of trust and credibility uh, will become foundational in that relationship. Uh, it won't be questioned because the data is not coming from the veterinarian directly anymore. So wearables and smart devices, you know, they've been around for probably the last seven to 10 years in pets. And obviously 10 years ago, they really weren't much. Uh, we were looking at collars with GPSs in them, with uh, accelerometers in them, very similar to your uh, whistle, right? Whistle was one of the, the first smart devices for pets that actually was done well and successful and is still out on the market today. Um, Mars purchased them and they're doing some really interesting information on using the data from the whistle caller in the Pet Insight Project and how that uh, data can be interpreted and compared to behavioral and medical data. So they've already done some great research to show just how valuable callers specifically are uh, in regards to medical care and patient outcomes specifically. But let's talk about more the consumer side because I, I believe that this will be more consumer driven. Uh, some veterinarians will and should drive it, but because these callers are coming in cute colors and styles and a lot of these, their primary objective is not for medical data, but really is for uh, pet and pet owner happiness, It'll be a consumer-driven fad first. But we as veterinarians have to pay attention to this because if there are objects, smart devices in our clients' homes that they're already utilizing for fun that can give us better medical data, we need to capitalize on that. So these smart devices, uh, like the callers, for instance, can tell us all about a patient's um, rest and sleep cycles or activity cycles can tell us how well they're moving around, especially post-surgically, or if they have a chronic illness or chronic condition. You know, if you're giving pain meds, hey, let's see if they're moving more the next day. So some clinics have callers um, in-house that they're actually renting out to their patients when they're trying new, uh, new treatments or when they are um, sort of looking after surgeries to see how recovery is. Now there's a few other smart devices that I think just don't get mentioned enough that I'm really excited about. So you can see the picture of the pet bot and it's just one picture of many, many of these. But these are cameras with uh, microphone speakers and automatic treat dispensers that you as a pet owner can control with an app. 
And so for dogs that have behavioral issues, and a lot of these smart devices are going to be so incredibly helpful for behavioral issues specifically. Um, you know, we can help prevent or treat things like separation anxiety, um, destructive behaviors due to boredom or hunger, uh, or for pets who, you know, just need to eat something all day long, having this automatically spit a treat out every 17 minutes can really do a lot for a pet's psyche and happiness. So there are some companies that are asking your permission to view the video, and I'm not going to unpack the piles of security issues that are uh, related within that, but looking at it from a sky high view, they are taking this video and they're trying to analyze it for behavioral issues so that while you're at home, this video, or I'm sorry, while you're gone, this video is, um, you know, watching your dog and can pick up and let you know, hey, your dog is barking, hey, your dog is digging, hey, your dog is destroying your couch, and to be able to give you signals uh, while you are away from the home so you know how your dog is doing. Other really cool devices, they have these uh, smart tennis balls, basically, regular balls, that um, they learn how to play with your pet. So they learn your pet's favorite ways to engage with the toy and then can actually repeat that behavior so that your pet stays more engaged. So some pets like to chase, some like to be chased, some just like to chew, and these balls can figure out um, when they are being messed with the most and try to encourage that behavior to really make sure that your pet's having a good time with this toy. Other ones, smart litter boxes are becoming huge. Uh, I personally will probably end up with one of these for my own cats one of these days. Uh, a few years ago, there were um, Talio, I think was one of the first smart litter boxes on the market. And they did great things. Unfortunately, they sort of flopped with um, getting out onto the market but the technology that they developed is still being used. And now it has accelerated to the point where some of these litter boxes um, actually have cameras within them. And they're analyzing your cat's fecal and urine material after they go. And so it can learn over time what is normal for your pet. And then one day if it notices diarrhea or a color change, or if your pet's been in and out more than it should be, it will send you a push notification through your Smart Litter Box app to let you know that your pet is experiencing some sort of medical issue. Uh, this is actually something I would love to have in a veterinary hospital. To have this in clinic for a cat that perhaps has cystitis and I'm trying to monitor its inputs and outputs and how many times it's in and out of the litter box, this would make my life and my technician's lives so much easier. And when we're tracking chronic conditions like kidney disease and diabetes, I think that these boxes are going to be just critical to better patient outcomes. And we're gonna see uh, longer lives for these pets. Obviously I'm excited about litter boxes, maybe more than I should be, but this is one that I really think is gonna make a huge difference in the veterinary community. And the last one that I have up there is this cool little robot. So this thing is kind of like a Roomba for dogs and it even has its own charging dock that it knows how to get back and forth to. But what it will do is sort of the same thing where it can videotape and actually analyze that video for behavioral patterns, but it's also a ball chucker. So throw some tennis balls in it and it can measure how long your room is. It will throw the tennis ball the appropriate length um, and then go back and get the ball if your dog doesn't bring it directly back. Um, so for all of these people with dogs that are, you know, really excitable, high energy, something like this while you're gone at work might wear your dog out so perfectly well. Um, and it still also does treats. It lets you talk to your dog the whole nine yards. So if you want to switch to the next slide, there's two companies that I want to talk about um, that are uh, part of these wearables that I think are really exciting. Uh, we'll start with Voice. Voice was on the market like five years ago. And unfortunately, didn't really make it the way that they wanted to. Um, as technologies do, I think I say this every week, as time goes on, they get better and they get cheaper. So voice is a perfect example of that. About three or four years ago, I remember talking to them and their collar was huge, it was bulky, it was super expensive, and it's trying to do heart rate, respiratory rate, but boy, reading those things through fur is really difficult. So they backtracked, they went back to the drawing board, 
they've now come back with something that is better than ever, more research. I believe it's going to be released sometime very soon, uh, but it's going to have just an incredible plethora of medical data in there. And I think this will be the collar that really gets veterinarians engaged in wearables because it's not just that activity monitor. It's not just that GPS. This is going to give us data from a pet at home that we've never been able to experience before. So I could go down the telehealth rabbit hole and talk about how critical this is going to be to really good telehealth because uh, obviously we'll be able to do way more in a telehealth fashion when we have accurate heart rates and respiratory rates and you know caloric calories burned all of that but this is the type of thing that is going to help pet owners be more accountable to their own pet's health right when they can actually see how their pet's heart rate's changing how their respiratory rate is changing through exercise or in heat i think it's really going to help people have a deeper understanding of um, their pet's health in a way that they've never experienced before. So I'm very excited about voice coming back on the market. Now Lulu Pet is a, a smart litter box. This is the one that I think is cool right now and these litter boxes are coming out pretty rapidly right now. Um, we've had just a couple of the past couple of years. I think we're finally to a point now where we're going to see many more companies coming onto the playing field because they're coming becoming more popular especially in Asia. Um, you know, smaller apartments, a lot more people have cats. Um, and so this is a Thai brand. Um, one of the previous smart litter boxes that is really good is from Japan. So not really an American thing yet, but they're coming over here. So this one particularly is going to measure your cat's weight, um, the weight of its outputs. It's going to be the one that has that camera in the top to look at your cat's urine and feces um, and see if there is anything weird there. So this is a litter box that, you know, sure, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks, but boy, if it helps your cat, um, you know, if they're a chronic cystitis kitty that gets blocked a lot or like those diabetics, this is going to be a game changer for so many people um, and ensuring their pet's health is really um, staying as good as it can be in those chronic condition situations. So while these are consumer products primarily, the veterinary applications are incredible. And I say this primarily because I hold out all of this hope that if um, you know, we can, as veterinarians, step back and really take a look at all the products that are out there that aren't necessarily made for us, but that we can adapt to our own practices to make us better veterinarians and to make our clients better pet owners, uh, we're gonna be better off all around. So um, I'll say this week, we can go to the next slide. Um, I'm more excited than ever because I really want one of these wearable collars for my new creature that we brought home. Um, we brought home a little puppy this past week and he's gonna be an adventure dog for sure. Uh, planning on taking him you know, up into the mountains and, and swimming and he went camping with us for the first weekend. So I'm really excited for one of these voice callers to test it out medically, see uh, just how accurate it is, I guess. Um, but primarily because I like to have that personal experience so I can actually recommend it, uh, not to my clients with pets, but also to other veterinarians and learn how we can integrate this into a telehealth program or integrate this um, you know, just more into a hospital flow in general. I can see an ICU full of pets wearing this collar where our technicians are no longer having to wake them up every 30 minutes to take heart rates and respiratory rates and temperatures, but instead everyone is sleeping happily with just a collar on their neck. And you've got just a dashboard on the wall that lists everyone's heart rates, respiratory rates, temperatures. It's gonna make our technicians' lives way easier. It's gonna make our ICUs much more efficient. Um, so I'm very excited to see where this goes. Um, so if you want to flip to the next slide, I think that's, yep, there he is. There's the troublemaker now. Uh, he is as perfect as a puppy can be, which means that when he's sleeping, he's the sweetest thing you'll ever find. And when he is awake first thing in the morning, he is a terror. <laughs> but he'll be fine. He's nine and a half weeks old. He's probably some sort of like Aussie something gigantic mix. 
uh, cause he's already 15 pounds at nine and a half weeks. So he's going to be a big boy. Um, so next week we may or may not be here. We've got some meetings, so we'll see, but regardless, I will see you probably the next Wednesday, Wednesday for more chatting about, uh, technologies and companies. Uh, and as a reminder, if anyone actually has any technologies or companies they'd like me to chat about, just let me know. Um, my website is welovetelemed.com and you can reach out to me through that. And I'd be happy to uh, you know, go over anything that anyone's interested in. So have a great Wednesday, everyone.